Um, let me know if my audio drops out or anything or it gets quiet. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, thanks so much. Um, I am going to be talking a little bit about, you know, what's, what's new with the software. Uh, so let's just jump right into it. Um, basically, um, yeah, I'll be answering, I can answer questions at the end of the presentation, um, or if something's important, uh, I'm sure Michael will let me know. Just a little background on me. I live in Michigan right about now. It feels a little bit like the lower left or looks a little bit like the lower left, but feels a little bit like the lower right. Keep, keep waking up in the morning with snow all over our lawn and it melts by about noon. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, I live and practice in Rockford, Michigan. This is the Northern Lights. Uh, someone locally took these pictures, just the, this picture the other day. It's um, in our local dam. Anyway, uh, this is my family. Just a little background. Here's my wife, my uh, four kids. And we, though we don't live in Kansas City anymore, we are diehard Chiefs fans still. And that's a good thing to be right about now. All right. This is my team. This is the, the team that I get to work with each day. Dr. Fisher and I work together on, um, you know, we kind of collaborate on a lot of patients and uh, he's been, he built this practice uh, years ago and has built an awesome practice. I recently moved here just a year and a half ago, was practicing out in Kansas City, as I mentioned, and uh, it's been an awesome, uh, complicated, you know, it's been, it's been stressful, but a, an awesome transition to be back home. And I'm very fortunate to have an awesome team that surrounds me and um, helps us to get done what we need done for our patients. And I think it's important to, to, to note this because it really does, you know, as cliche as it sounds, it does take a team, especially on this kind of stuff. Um, when it comes to guided surgery, digital ortho, and all the digital stuff, it's really easy. And I'm, I'm a control freak. It's really easy to try to take everything and do it yourself because you have all these cool toys and these new ways of doing things, but realistically, you know, we need to use our team to, you know, they want to help us. They want to help the patients, allow them to help as much as possible. So I think um, delegation is important. I'll touch on that a little bit more in just a moment. Just a little bit of the technology I have in my office. I'm a CEREC user and have been since 2012. Um, I've been using Blue Sky Plan since technically 2011, but I got really heavy into it in 2013 um, through guided surgery. And then uh, Digital Ortho was in 2017 when we first launched that. And uh, I guess uh, actually the um, Ceph analysis module, we actually got that live a year or two before that. But anyway, I use CareStream, both my CT machine, uh, CS9600, and I had the CS3600 intraoral scanner. I'm looking to possibly uh, upgrade that soon to uh, another scanner, probably the Trios 5, but um, that's yet to be determined. Um, I'm also, uh, I use Sprint Ray a lot, and I, I speak for them at times, um, and I've worked with them for since pretty close to their first initial launch. And so I have two Sprint Ray printers uh, in my office um, that I use, that we use on a fairly off, uh, regular basis. We have the 95S for our, most of our aligner models and our models in general and things like that. And we have a 55 for our, um, basically everything else, uh, just the way it works out for us. Um, is there a reason to pick one or the other? Don't worry, it's a whole different subject. Anyway, I'll move on from there. Um, this is my website, baringrutterdds.com. You can find a lot of um, stuff. You can find links to videos. You can find, if you go up to online learning, you'll see it kind of categorized by subject, uh, whether it's guided surgery or digital ortho um, and, and whatnot. And then lastly, uh, you can find course information on there for when I do have courses. Um, so yeah, I'll move on from there. So keys to success, uh, or the, what is the key to success? And I, I, I do feel confident that it's delegation because if you are requiring yourself to do everything, you're going to be held up a lot. Um, you know, people, the, since uh, the beginning of CEREC days, one of the biggest deterrents for people getting into CEREC has always been, I don't want to do lab work. Well, yeah, I get it. But um, sometimes it's nice to take over a little bit. I apologize. I need to cough for just a moment. I'm <laughs> still recovering. Apologize for that. Um, I've been dealing with a upper respiratory infection all weekend. I'm just finally back to work, but still got a tickle. The more I talk, right? Great time to do a presentation. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, Michael was offered to have me not speak today, but I hate putting things off. So anyway, we're actually delegation. very lucky because as of last Pardon? night, Byron said he can't present. And this morning, 
He yeah. did two things. So we're actually yeah. very lucky to have him. Um, so uh, anyway, so delegation, um, it, get your team trained, you know, work with them, show them what you're, you're needing, what you're expecting. And um, that way they can help deliver what you need. Um, and over time, they will just know, you know, uh, they'll be faster at it than you are. Um, so where do I, where does this work in the, the digital ortho realm? We need them to set up our cases for alignment then to process the cases after you've finished the alignment for printing and then print the models, fabricate the trace. I mean, there's a lot of it. They're now your lab. Okay. Now you might have a lab technician in office. You might have, you know, just a, a well-trained assistant. You could have who, whoever it is, maybe a hygienist that takes a day that doesn't see patients and just does lab work. I don't know, whatever your, um, however it works for you. I have a friend who and his wife does a lot of the lab work. Uh, that's what, you know, or she did at a time. I don't know if she still does Danny or not, but I know she did for a while work in that realm, in that realm. But anyway, you, you know, and it might be that you have, uh, people that you know got to the point where they can do it the entire thing. They can do this, the actual alignment and they know what they're doing because they've watched enough of these videos. They've got the training. They've figured out what needs to be done. And now they are your lab. That, that's great too. I don't suggest jumping into that because you don't want to overwhelm them with that so much responsibility, but there's so much that can be delegated in this workflow. So I, I, I like to point that out because some of these things are time are, are time consuming, but a lot of them uh, if you're a dentist watching this and you feel like, oh, do I want to incorporate this? How much of my time is it going to take? Most of the time shouldn't be, in my opinion, you, unless you just happen to love doing it and you have the time. Okay. So getting into the actual updates, I want to talk about something real briefly called machine learning. And this is my understanding of how it all works and which Michael can, of course, expand upon it if he wishes. But what is it? When we feed the machine, it learns what we want, need, and improves. So I know you're not supposed to lead, read your slides, but I'm reading them. Um, the point being is machine learning is in a way, if we give the, give um, not this software, we're not telling this software, we're telling, we, if we feed um, Blue Sky Bio, the company, if we give them cases where we have issues and whatnot, um, they can use that, that, that output to um, help develop the software. They're, they have machine learning where it's actually learning what's not supposed to be used, done, and then it improves its predictions later on. So why do you care? Well, we all want consistent improvement and improve, enhanced efficiency. So the more, the better it is at predicting what you want, the better it's going to do at actually giving you what you need. So um, yeah, if we tell it, we, it's just like teaching your, your assistants, if you don't tell them how to take photos, that's something I've always talked about in my courses. If you don't tell them how you want your photos taken and just expect them to, to know and just take the photos in the same positions as you always like them, well, you can expect to be disappointed um, because what I see is what I want is not necessarily what they're going to think is what is important. And it's not that they're wrong. It's just you have your preferences and they have theirs. If you want them to look like you want, you need to tell them. So the same thing for the computer, so the software to improve, we need to show it what it's doing wrong. So how can you help? You can submit cases when you have uh, troubled, uh, when you have trouble. And occasionally if you have really good, uh, com you know, complex cases where you've worked everything out and you are like, wow, this is going to be amazing. I want the computer to do this for me. That's a, that's one you could submit as well, but more important right now are the trouble cases. If you find that it did not segment your teeth, and we'll talk about what that means in a minute, but there's segmentation of the STL and segmentation of the DICOM. If it's not giving you what you need, send us the case. Send the case to plan at blueskybio.com. Submit it there. You can upload it through Bio Big Box. You can send it through Dropbox, however you want. Send it to that email address and give them the chance to try to feed the, the machine so it can learn how to improve. So those are kind of disclaimers. What are these major updates? And so here's some of them, there's actually more to it. Okay. Um, but for the amount of time I had the day, I don't even know how I'm gonna get through all this, but STL to DICOM automatic alignment. So that's a big improvement because now DICOMs are going to be more and more important for treatment in my opinion. And you'll see why, uh, and that just means it's going to put this, the, the STL models right in the line with the arches and go from there. 
we have auto annotation. This is a big one that most of you have not seen, um, or if you've seen previews of it, most of you haven't experienced it. It's uh, at least not in the Blue Sky plan side, where it automatically marks the teeth. And, and if you're not familiar with what that means, I'll show you in a moment. Automatic detection of missing teeth, which is great because in the past we would have to tell it to skip teeth if they were missing. And this kind of goes into this whole automatic annotation. It doesn't screw that up, which would be a, a huge issue for a lot of patient cases. And the case I'm going to show you today, it has missing premolars. And so you'll get to see that. Along with that, the segmentation lines are now merged or linked when you have missing teeth, because that was a problem before. And it's hard to describe here, but rather than having one line that separated two different teeth, you'd have two lines that you had to sort of stack them together or link them manually. I won't bore you with more than that. Just suffice to say, if you've treated a case like that, it used to be annoying. Annoying is no longer. STL segmentation. So we've um, had this for a while, and this, but this is an example of where machine learning has really helped us because the segmentation, it so rarely needs any fixing. It just cuts the teeth out really well. And I usually just get to basically ignore it, just move on because it, it, it does such a good job. This is the big, um, this is the next big thing other than the auto annotation is the DICOM segmentation, automatically segmenting out each individual tooth and its root, which is gonna help us to precisely, uh, or, or it's going to allow for precise pivot point positioning. And I'll show you what that means shortly and why that's so important, so critical to your cases working out better than they could ever have worked before. And then we have two dart, two arch, uh, two D arch dimension measuring. This is something that's been possible before, but I'm going to show you how it just got a lot easier or a lot more accessible. Um, that's for like measuring intermolar width, inner canine width, this, that, or the other thing, and um, enhanced smoothing the gingiva. So if you've ever had a case where you've had to move teeth a lot, you'll see that the soft tissue gets really gnarled up, and it makes these weird jagged edges, which makes it makes printing a little bit challenging, but it also makes the trays harder to, to make because you got to kind of bypass that. And anyway, this has uh, greatly improved that. So now I'm going to go ahead and just show you the video that I created that walks through this. And there's no audio to this video. So I am going to um, uh, just play it and kind of talk and pause as needed. So let me, oops, all right, let me go ahead and maximize this. And so this is the, the starting workflow. We're going to go ahead and click on aligners and then import CT scan, which isn't something we used to do. We, we had the ability to do this, but now it's a good, it's, it's, um, there's more reason to do it before it was like, eh, do I want to bother with that? How much help, how helpful is it going to be? It wasn't as helpful, but now uh, again, you're going to see why this becomes invaluable to ortho. So um if you have cone beam in your office, go ahead and take it. Now, I want to pause here for a second. Oh, I didn't pause. I thought I did. Um, uh, this step right here allows you to reorient your CT scan. If you find that you took the CT scan that chin's really far down or the chin's really far up, go ahead and optimize it, rotate it. I talk about this in all my courses and guided surgery as well. Don't skip this step. It's helpful. It's helpful for your planning if you've aligned it properly. This one wasn't too bad off to begin with, but anyway. Oops, sorry. Somewhere around here. All right, so now I'm picking the actual STL or the IFPLYs in this case, but your models, your, your digital models, the teeth. PLY preserves color. Uh, it doesn't always work with, with, with care stream. It's a separate subject here, but anyway, um, so right now it's running through a teeth segmentation and I'm going to, I think I paused the video at a certain point, um, just so that it could speed up a little bit. This, there's, there's some processing that goes on there. It's not long, but it's about, a, you know, 30 seconds a minute. We had a chance to confirm the alignment of the upper teeth. And I didn't talk about that. So I'll just show it on this, on this arch. If you look really closely, you'll see that there's a little, uh, green line, the outline that's wrapped around these teeth. It's, I, I know I'm sure it's hard to see, but you're just confirming that it looks pretty well aligned. And if it is, you're clicking okay. So this is all stuff we're doing on the front end that we didn't have to do before, but it's because we're using those CT scans. So now we can go ahead and we can proceed forward to the jaw alignment, which is what we would normally do. You know, we would just be starting right now. I don't know why I'm sitting here for so long. I must have, anyway. 
So now what it's doing is it is actually um, annotating those teeth. It's making those, those dots on the teeth. And this is, you can see, it's pretty darn quick. Um, and so what you won't have to do is mark all the nodes, the mesial and distal nodes that we've had to. You can see that they're all pretty darn good. I'm gonna make a slight tweak up here on number eight, I believe. And the rest of them, oh, number 10, right? That mesial in there. And the rest of them, I think, are, are look pretty darn good to me. So I can move forward. Now I'm gonna show you that the, um, I don't know what I'm pointing at right there, but on the lower, there's a little more help that's needed. So these are other things to, to send in to, um, to, the, the, to submit cases. If you find that you had to change a lot of the node positioning, go ahead and put them where you want and then save it and submit that to Blue Sky Plan. Save it as a different name. That way you can keep working forward or whatever, but um, so you don't over save on that. But that way that they can feed that to the computer, to the machine and help improve those moving on. The rest of these teeth get look start looking pretty good. I don't really need to mess with those. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's the automatic annotation. Some cases it does better than others, um, but I still prefer it that I just have to move them around a little bit than having to you know, start from the very beginning. All right, so this is after the teeth have been segmented. You can see these lines are pretty darn awesome. Um, I'm gonna show you one area where I end up fixing only because I felt, oh yeah, I'm showing that the lines are connected right here. That's where missing premolars in the past, the lines would not be attached. So again, if you haven't seen it, don't worry about it. But I moved that node, did I need to? Honestly, no, but I wanted to show you how simple that is to correct that and everything else looks good. So I'm gonna to proceed to the next, to the lower arch and everything here looks excellent. No need to mess with all this. And so then we can proceed to model trimming. Oh, I just realized my mouse isn't in the right spot on this video. It's because there was something weird going on with my recording, but actually like, you see where the nodes are? My mouse is moving. <laughs> that's really weird. But anyway, that's why when I click, I'm actually not over the buttons, even though I actually am. And you can't see my mouse right now dragging these nodes. Um, if you don't scan too far behind your, your terminal tooth, you know, it, it's going to leave these jagged edges, which actually won't affect anything other than your printed models will have a little bit of a jaggedness to them. So I tend to, you know, adjust those there. I have other strategies that I use that I take teaching courses about how to mark that line. But technically, you could proceed forward. You're just more likely to want to print horizontal rather than vertical if you don't optimize those lines. I think I pause it here in a second. Maybe not. This one, I pause the recording so I can get farther ahead. All right. So now we are at the part where we can actually see everything lined up and you can see that the roots and the teeth and right now the models are set to be 50% transparent by default. You can adjust that down here on there's a little slider bar down here. But what I'm showing here is I'm showing where the pivot points are. The pivot points are pretty high and I want to stop for a second because I want to explain why that is. The pivot points are determined based on a graph or a chart of data. We develop that chart based on average tooth length and what portion of the tooth is the root. And we figured that the center of rotation of a tooth is not the apex of the tooth. It is not the crustal bone of the tooth. And it certainly isn't anywhere in the inside the crown of the tooth. The center of rotation occurs at the center of resistance. Now you can argue crustal bone offers more resistance than cancellous bone. But you can also argue that thicker portions of roots have you know, well, this is an actual argument. The, the thicker portions of the root has more surface area, therefore more resistance. So we're trying, we need to find somewhere in the middle. The problem is the software with, without the DICOM, all it has to determine where that pivot point is, is based on the crown of the tooth. And it assumes where is a root for this tooth probably at? And it goes up in that direction. And it goes a certain number of millimeters away from the, the occlusal aspect or the incisal edge of the tooth. It has to, that's how every software works. That's how, you know, every single ortho software out there is doing that because how else is it gonna know where to rotate the tooth by? The advantage we now have is that we can see the roots. We can actually see them and say, oh, well that's, look at this one right here. The pivot point is literally outside of the tooth. 
because the crown, the shape of the crown of this worn tooth made it look like it was actually, the root was probably this way, but it wasn't. So it put it, it lingual to the root. The other ones were fairly centered in the roots. They were just too high, I would say. So now that we can see that, what happens if you try to move this tooth around? If you try to move it where it's like that, well, then you're going to be running into an issue where it's the hinge axis or the rotation uh, center of rotation is right here, which means it's not going to be moving like it, you know, the, your, your planned movement is not going to work like it actually happens in reality, which means what? mid porous corrections. Treatment's not going to go to plan. You're going to be wondering, dang it, why didn't that tooth move the way I wanted it to? Because duh, it didn't, um, you didn't have the pivot point right. And so now we have something that, as far as I know, no other software has, is the ability to actually position these pivot points where they ought to be. So I'm going to hit replay just to quickly show you how to um, update these pivots. I'm not going to change all of them. I believe in this video. I think I should just fix three of them, um, a couple of them, whatever. So what I can do real quick is I can come over to the right side and click on the refine midline. I know my mouse isn't working quite right. I actually started to move the tooth on X, uh, by mistake. So I just undo that. I click on the refine midline, which is over here. And now I can just move the pivot point, center it, and then rotate it to however I want, and then move it down a little bit. Now I click on this tooth. I want to center it a little bit, rotate it as needed, and then shove it down a little bit. Somewhere slightly closer to the crest of the bone because the root is wider there but somewhere somewhat in the middle. And this is the one that's really off. I should have centered it first, but I didn't, but it still worked out pretty well. So right there, I'm centered there. I need to now center it mesial distally and then rotate it just a little bit and then we're good. I, now I need to lower it. Do I do that? Yeah, I do. So now you know that when you go to move this tooth, I'm gonna turn off the refined midline, I believe in a second here so that I can actually rotate this tooth. Um, oh, I'll, I'm gonna pause for a second. I will come back to that in a moment. I, I had to add in a couple blurbs to this video. I wanted to show you here that when you look at those, those screens at the bottom down here, if you turn on the, um, the opposing arch, which is turned off right now, you'll see that the teeth, I, I maximize the window, they're in occlusion. That's okay. It may look weird, like, oh no, why, how, why aren't these teeth lined up? Because you can change to occlusion positioning or CT positioning. Of course, for doing your ortho alignment, you want to see the occlusal positioning, but it's just important because how else is the computer going to know how to segment the teeth when, they're, when you usually take a DICOM with an open mouth? So that's what I was showing there. Now I'm showing you that if you tilt this tooth about the center of rotation, you can actually expect that to be true. When you go to push on a tooth, you're only pushing on the crown. You can't push down here. So if I put the pivot point way up here at the apex, that's just not realistic because the apex is not locked in concrete and can't move. No, it'll move in the opposite direction. If I move the pivot point down, like towards the crest of the bone, I believe is, oh, I go all the way to the, the incised ledge. This would be akin to um, what we call torquing the roots in aligners. Okay, so you get the crown roughly where you want it, but now you want to torque that root buckler lingual. There you go. But what if you're doing braces? How, what about when you put brackets on and you put a patient with rectangular wires in a bracket channel to do some final finishing torquing? That's where the center of rotation occurs here. This is just for demonstration. I'm not telling you to use that functionality in this software right here, but that's why the pivot point is so important. That's what's happening when you're doing bracket and wire ortho with rectangular wires. That is torquing of roots, as opposed to tipping teeth, um, which tipping works sort of the same in aligners and braces, very similarly, uh, very similar. But the um, torquing is a little bit different because we usually do torquing movements at the inside of the ledge. Now, this little video or thing right there, I wanted to show. Uh, I want to show you that um, I can move this up this uh, blue line sorry i'm wandering all over the place all the way up to here by moving this bar up and now i can go to toolbars turn on the measurements toolbar 
I can maximize this window. And now I can measure intermolar width. A lot of people have asked me about that. How do you do that in the software? It's been possible for a long time, but it's not been real intuitive. So now I can measure that. I can measure your canine width. You can measure at the cusp tips if you want. You can measure it wherever you want. But that's something that I think is really helpful, especially in constricted arch case, which <laughs> what cases aren't constricted these days. So um, yeah, I think that's it for the video. So I hope I kind of covered everything in that video. Um, let me get out of here. And this is just a little graph. I found this online. I've always wanted one. It's still not great. I'm just going to skip that. It's kind of pointless. But um, so you can see, these were all the different things we talked about. These are all those new things that have come into play. There's also the ability in the sequencing of movements to duplicate steps. Now, I just want to touch on that briefly because it's hard to show in that video. And it's, it's going to take more videos to explain this better. But suffice to say, you can get to a point in treatment where you are good, but now you, you've moved teeth to where you want them, but you know that in the next subsequent steps, you're going to run into a bunch of collisions mid, mid correction. And you're, you're trying to keep them from butting into each other. And you really just want to hold some teeth still. You don't want these teeth to move, but you know, it's going to take four steps while some other teeth move out of the way and then move those other teeth. So let's say you're expanding the posterior teeth before you bring the lower anterior teeth into alignment. Well, what you can do is you can get to that step where you feel comfortable then you can duplicate that step. In that duplicated step, you can now flare out the posterior teeth to wherever you want them to be. Or maybe it's a round trip institution. You move them to where you want to and then hit refresh steps. It's going to add a number of steps between those two, that step, that duplicate step, because it needs a few steps to get there. But all those other teeth remain still. They didn't move. So this is a way of adding waypoints or checkpoints. It's a matter, a way of developing spots in treatment where we can say, no, we want to do this first and then this and then this. So that's a really, it's, it's a, big deal. It really is. And that's why it takes more time to explain it. I hopefully that brief explanation makes some sense. Um, Cause I'm actually already over time. Um, I have, uh, if you wanted to you, you be notified about upcoming courses, please check out my website and go to the contact page. There's an area for you to put in your name, your email address, and what you're interested in. I am right now already developing the notes. And by making this public, <laughs> now I got really like, I kicked in the butt to do this. I'm creating a new series of online, um, uh, online courses, and they're going to be more module based. Um, and I'm, I'm looking for more like just a few hours of each one. So it'll be lower cost, but it'll also be more focused on what you want to learn as opposed to having to take a, a two day version. That you, maybe you only want little bits and pieces. You don't want the basics. You only want the advanced or, oh, you only want the, the basics because you're going to outsource the advanced. And I mean, by the way, I didn't mention that, you know, this is great. If you want to teach, take to do these cases, but what if you have a complex case, you might want to outsource that to lab pronto. That's a, that's, those are labs that are certified by BS blue sky bio to design your cases. But anyway, the, um, so that's, that's a great resource. It's available right in your web in your, um, right inside of your software to, to push a case to them. But anyway, um, if you want to be notified when I have those modules up and going, please uh, register here. I don't send out spam. I've literally, I've had this up here for a while and I've not, I've not used it much. So um, you're not going to get spam. I just, this is my best way of letting you know when I have those courses available. Other than that, you can see me on Facebook, um, uh, Instagram, YouTube, and whatnot. And here's my email address and my website. So Michael, I think we're pretty close to on time. Okay. Do you have any you have a few minutes for questions. I didn't actually even look to see if there were questions. I was so boring. I don't think there are any questions. Well, nope. There's still just still just there's just still a clear. decent number of people here. So uh, I'm assuming that I was just so darn clear in everything I described. There's no questions. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen actually and run through. Michael, had, before everyone takes off, Michael does have some things he wants to share. It's not just future core stuff. It's actually ortho related. Yeah, I'm just going to 
share my screen. I'll go th through a couple of comments and some functionality that people may or may not be aware of. I'm not gonna go into detail regarding the functionality. I just wanna show that the functionality exists. And if people wanna learn more, and we have videos online, we have tons of videos um, by Baron, by myself, and they're available on blueskybio.university. That's essentially where we're centralizing all of the educational information for all of our digital solutions, including Blue Sky Plan and others. So you should be able to share, to see my screen now. Basically, the functionality that is being talked about during this presentation is available in Blue Sky Plan version 4.11. This is our newest Blue Sky Plan version. It's available to download from our websites. We're gonna be pushing out to users probably in the next week or two, but if you wanna go ahead and get it, then simply just go to blueskybio.com and just go ahead and uh, download it, install it, on top of what you have, just run the installation file, it will override what you have installed on your computer. And of course, your export credits will automatically be carried over. Um, okay, blueskybio.university is what I mentioned earlier. Ton of free educational content on all of our digital and non-digital products. So you could go ahead and check that out. Blue Sky Bio Digital is where we centralize um, essentially all of the information regarding our different digital solutions. So you could go ahead and check that out. We have Blue Sky Plan, which everybody knows about. We have other solutions such as Lab Pronto. As Baron mentioned earlier, if you need help with the digital design, you could get your ortho cases designed for you for $49. You could also outsource your entire um, aligner case for very reasonable prices, starting at $499 or $799 for a larger case. So check out Lab Pronto. We have Bio Big Box, which is also going to be getting a facelift very soon in the future. We have Blue Sky Monitoring, which I'll mention a little bit about in a minute, where you could um, re use remote dental monitoring. We have a new platform. It's blueskymonitoring.com. It's being av it's available free of charge. You could uh, get scans, get photos from your patients, videos from your patients remotely, and it gets uploaded to your platform. Uh, Blue Sky Viewer, which is also an online viewer, is going to be launched at the same time as the Bio Big Box facelift. So that's coming soon as well. You'll be able to view your ortho cases and other cases in the online viewer. Blue Sky Simulation is also one of our less known features and functionalities where you could take with your cell phone or with the patient's cell phone or also view the web, but the cell phone's easier because you could just snap a picture of the patient smiling. A minute later, you get their smile returned to you with um, with a perfect smile, with fixed teeth. So it's great demonstrating to the patient what they're able to get if they go through the treatment. Of course, it's a visualization, and but it's, it's good to help uh, the patients visualize what they're going to be getting. We have Blue Sky Meet, which is um, a video conferencing platform, and Blue Sky Bio University, which I mentioned earlier, is available for all of our training courses and information. The upcoming webinar schedule is there. We have a section um, for our educators where each one has their own section. You could click on the educator, you can see their, their videos and everything connected to that. So that's something that's live and we're continuing to build that out. Next is a lesser known information about Blue Sky Plan. The Blue Sky Plan together with the Graphy material now has FDA approval. Okay, so I think I don't know if we're the first in the world, but we might be to have a software together with a material that's now FDA approved. Um, there are still some issues in terms of how convenient it is to use and to print and to do everything, but all, all those things are being worked out in terms of the actual material in the printer. But Blue Sky Plan is FDA approved for direct aligner printing with the graphic material. Lab Pronto, as I mentioned earlier, it's a fantastic resource. Oh, these are the prices for outsourcing. If you want to outsource your entire liner case, if you don't have the time or the resources or the printer or whatever it is, and you want to get the digital planning done for you, as well as the case, you could outsource the entire case. Up to 24 liners is $4.99. That includes the digital planning as well. Up to 80 aligners, that's total aligners, including the top and the bottom, is $7.99. And unlimited aligners, if you have a whopper of a case for more than 80 aligners, that's $9.99. So the prices are extremely reasonable. Turnaround time is, is great. Um, 
a digital, if you order a digital plan, it's turned around usually with the same business day or two business days. If you're ordering with the liners, it might take five business, business days or six business days until it ships. But uh, the prices obviously are very reasonable and very convenient. Um, so lesser known functionality that we have in the software, including the ortho module, is the ability to import a 3D face scan. Today, there are apps where you could use the app to do to use your cell phone to scan the patient's face and import that into the software. There's the Scandi app for iOS. There's a clone Android app. And I'd like to um, thank Dr. Andre Drummond and Dr. Matt Semeraz that actually submitted this uh, photo and pointed out how convenient and easy it is to do with your cell phone and import it into Blue Sky Plan. We also have one of our doctors in the Blue Sky community who posted this on Facebook, which I thought was very interesting, basically just using your CT scan, cutting out um, the smile part, and very quickly you have some sort of makeup um, to show the teeth and to show the face. Uh, this is what I mentioned earlier regarding the 2D smile design. It can be done via our website at iSmile Simulation, and also, as I mentioned earlier, via the app. This is me. Use the app. You could see the before and the after. So you could go ahead and try that out. That's also available at no charge. And we have um, Blue Sky Monitoring, which is the remote, um, the remote monitoring platform. We've recently added the ability for the side-by-side -side comparison. So you could get the video from the patient. And right next to it, you could view the digital tooth setup for that particular stage. So if you're up to you know, line or set number four, just set number five, you get the photo or you get the video in from the patient and you could view that side by side uh, together with the STL model that's prepared in the Blue Sky Plan software. Um, so that's pretty much the features and functionalities I wanted to point out. As I mentioned earlier, there's online resources to be able to uh, learn more about these different things on blueskybio.university. We have the upcoming webinars uh, scheduled so you can see there as well. And um, that's, that's it for now. Uh, Baron, do you have any uh, final comments or anything you'd like to add? No, I don't think so. Uh, I think I'm pretty good at that point. Okay, so I'd like to thank everybody for attending today's presentation. Uh, some, marks, some remarks that I mentioned at the beginning that uh, the CE credits should arrive via email within a week or so. Uh, check out our upcoming schedule. Um, Baron, thank you so much for the webinar presentation, for all the educational content you put together, for all the help and consulting that you do to make Blue Sky Plan and our other products, uh, you know, what they are. And um, thanks so much today for everybody for attending. Thanks.